wish I was dead. And I want to kill you. That's why we're still America's favorite couple. <laughs> This is horrible! You don't think I'll kill you? Don't you? Get back. Hey, 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 back off. Come here, come here, come here. Okay, relax. Hey, Margaret's hey. upset. All right, everyone inside. Let's go. Get back. Come on. Get in the back. Go have some fun in the back room. Let's go. Do you mind not manhandling me? That's just your favorite fantasy. Move! Back off, Mom. You don't want to die before you find Paul Robeson and let him get your pants stuck, do you? I just said hello. I just said I thought I'd seen him on a show. What's your name? You're a whore and a liar, and you're turning me into something I hate. I want your name and some ID. I'm Emil Yannings in the Blue Angel. I better say that on your ID. I don't want to press charges. I, I, I don't want him arrested. Oh, oh God! Get a doctor! Come back, sons of bitches! You okay, Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much am I cut? You got a good cut, Phil. I'm gonna throw a bottle. You see anybody up there? Uh, I can't see nobody. I want to get Phil to the emergency room. His scalp's cut pretty good. Go ahead. We got these two. That guy's not Emilianings. Give him a smack. Call for backup. Find a prick through this bottle. Just get Phil to the hospital. I'm sorry you got hurt. They're probably trying to hit us. You and your wife want to shut in your mouth until you get into the station house? We under arrest? No, this is a double date. You, what did I do? I, I just got beat up. We need your statement about what happened. Why don't you start with why he tried to grab Jackie Robinson's clock? Hey, shut your filthy faggot mouth. Get in the car. Call this from outside Smokey's, boss. The one assaulted the other in the street, then both of them went at it. Anyway. That's a lie. He's lying. He, you yacked enough. He beat Paul for no reason, and he beat me when I tried to stop him. You're the one lying. Sir? How are you feeling? My head hurts. He punched him. And then he ran his head against the side of a trash bin. He's full of crap, boss. I'm afraid they fractured his skull. Get their pedigrees on the way to the ER. You don't think he's faking? Oh, this is beautiful. I saw this jackpot coming the minute we left the radio car. So you know, Sarge, someone threw a bottle, split Phil Roos' car's head open. I'm aware of that. Get both these people looked at. Self-known. I'm employing a new weapon in my arsenal of policing. Just don't employ it with me in the line of fire. Nick, what's up, Rob? I'm swearing a vow in front of law enforcement officer Lowry. This sand monkey glued my lock shut, shows up with his push cart. He's winding up dead in the street. Someone did a job on these, huh, Nick? Some sand monkey with his Elmer's glue. Can I suggest for openness we stop using the term sand monkey? This is breakfast I'm losing. Plus pay the locksmith whenever he gets here, plus all new gates. Nick, would you like to give me a name for your suspect? Omar Gaddafi. I don't know, some crap like that. I'm sure Mr. Gaddafi did it. He swears yesterday in front of multiple witnesses. But were you there when he says that? 
Hmm. Right after you knocked over his cot. You're an idiot. You know that? My brother raised an idiot. Nick, am I gathering that the glued locks are part of a larger story? Larger story, Yasser Arafat comes every day with his hot dog wagon and sets up front of my place. What time does he usually show up? Usually about 10.30, he starts being a pain in my ass. All right. We're going to ride back here and talk to him, get his side of the story. Which we can't do if he's lying dead in the street. Am I right? You're going to arrest him. We're going to see what's what. Don't let him say with his permit from 42 Broadway and how he could be like 20 feet from my place, huh? I hear you, Nick. The locksmith is here from Nick. But you see that? We're making progress already. 10.30, sometimes quarter to 11, all right? See you then, Nick. Yeah, see you then. When do you start talking like Sally Jesse Raphael? I'm reading a book on anger management. It's called Wellness Within, Wellness Without. We see a bank robbery, you still try to stop the guy, right? Of course. That's energy appropriate for the moment. Thanks for meeting me. I gotta be in court in half an hour. What's up? You're not going to be happy what I got to tell you, Jimmy. I mean, I'm not either, but it's where I am now, and I got to ask you what to do. Go ahead. When I was driving part-time for that car service, I drove this guy a couple of times. It's Patty Flanagan. He was a nice enough guy, maybe daddy's age. A little bit of an oiler, but anyways, since I'm in the academy, he would called like three or four times, and I drove him. Off the books. What's the complication? You know, first couple of times, it was just to the airport and whatnot. What's it, the complication, Terry? The night last week, he offers me driving him to the Bronx. I'll need to wait. There may be some activity when we leave. 200 bucks for the job. I'll wait from outside this apartment on East Tremont Avenue. Two guys come out with them carrying duffel bags. We load the duffel bags in the trunk... Driving back to Queens, he pays and asks if I want to do this regular. Do not tell me you didn't think this could be drug-related or to do with guns. Driving out there, Jimmy, I thought maybe somebody owed him money. When when they came out with the duffel bags, I don't know what the hell to do. The guy knows you're in the academy? I told him before that night. You know what you might have done to yourself here, Terry? That's why I reached out. I need to know what to do. You got to turn yourself in. I do. Believe me, this guy takes a collar. His first conversation when he's looking to buy a walk is going to be offering the name of this young cop in the academy helped him do a wrong thing. Oh, man. You turn yourself in. Ask how the job wants you to play it when this guy asks you to do more. Yeah, all right. This Jonas with IAB who's been investigating the Hopkins shooting don't seem like he takes no pleasure hurting cops. You want me to put you with him? Yeah, whatever you think. I'll set it up. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I was looking to put a few extra dollars together, is all. Don't say that again. They come out that apartment with those duffel bags. You say, excuse me, and catch a bus. I'll set this up with IAB. How's the head? Ventilated. 27 stitches. Canvassing that building for the idiot through the bottle. We've seen Hegan and Pitterino bring the collars into the ER. I just heard the one guy has swelling in his brain. He had a hemorrhage. Yeah, huh? Hegan and Pitterino said him and the other one went at each other in the back of the sector car. H him and his lover did? Was that the case when you had them? The older guy was was beating the other one for flirting. Right. The rest of the question is, was the other guy fighting back? At that juncture, not too much. He was not fighting back. It must have happened in a radio call. When we had him, the, the one guy was lipping a lot of attitude. He was an Air Force flyer, some pilot for the Blue Angels. 
the other guy, he was crying and carrying on how he wished he was dead. Right up your line of duty injury reports. All right, boss. Glad that wasn't worse. Yeah, I'm still ambulatory. See the promotions list, Dickie? My favorite IAB lieutenant. That is just desserts. And at least make a captain, you won't be vulturing around the house. Otherwise, I would expect a visit. Off this thing outside Smokey's? Shaping up real stinky, Francis. One homosexual's halfway in a coma. The other one says Hegan and Pitterino tuned him up on the way back to the house. My God. Hegan and Pitterino say they beat each other in the back of the radio car. They had to pull over to separate them. Any chance that's right? Rusikoff and Villain Wave that made the original caller said they did not see any fisticuffs back and forth. It was only the one guy punching out his friend. Where's he gonna put a reno? Bringing a conscious homosexual back to the house. I don't want to jam up no other cops, Phil. But as far as my guy went, when I had him, he didn't make no trouble at all. Then write that. I mean, but definitely it's possible. Subsequently, he might have started resisting or fighting with the boyfriend. We come in at the end of the fist fight. Tempers were high. Before we could get a real read on who did what or why, I get hit on the coconut and you drive me off. It'd been a fist fight. Tempers were high. We couldn't read much more than that. That'd be the gist. I just don't want to put Hegan and Pitterino in trouble. Hector, the both of us know that one guy didn't look like he was going to be throwing too many haymakers at his pal. Right. Making Hegan and Pitterino's story a little aromatic. There's a situation here, saying what you saw and no more. You're not hurting cops, but you avoid squashing the truth with the large armored tank. Thanks for the help, Phil. I hope that'll end our part of it. That'd be the best outcome. Congratulations on your promotion. Oh, I appreciate that. Francis Donovan and I saw the list this morning. Yes, I had some forewarning. But I was relieved to see it in black and white. In spite of your rank, I see your antennae are still in first class working order. I, I don't take your meaning. We had a suspect in current injury being brought into the house. I see. Isn't that why you're here? No, Sergeant. I am the new CO of this precinct. It'll be announced tomorrow. But I wanted you and Sergeant Donovan to know beforehand. Well, that is some turn of events. I am not naive enough to think that I don't bring baggage with me, Sergeant. No, uh, that would be accurate. I did my job at IAB for nine years, and I don't apologize for it. That job had different priorities. But as a precinct captain, my first loyalties will be to the people in this house. Be interesting to see that occur. Only time can prove out what I tell you is true. I'll be watching. So, you know, you could be walking into a haymaker? Oh, uh, you're referring to the injured suspect. Our guys claim that him and his friend were fighting in the back of the radio car and they had to pull over to separate him. The companion claims that our guys tuned them both up without provocation. I'm getting reports from all the involved officers. Yeah, well, I want to be kept apprised. Happy to do so. I appreciate your willingness to open a fresh ledger, Sergeant. I will keep you posted, Captain.
No one picked up the phone yet to IAB. They must do it by scent. Francis, put your fanny against this wood here. There went our new cap. <laughs> Smell the salts? Sorry till you get here. I don't want to go to prison the rest of my life. Take it easy. This is free country, yes or no? Let's keep it calm. Ask him where's his tube of glue. Sir, do you know anything about this man having the locks on his restaurant gates vandalized last night? I said hot dog, cold drink. That's it! Probably sends money back to Yemen. They can hire suicide bombers. I'm not from Yemen, stupid guy. He's actually not from Yemen. Shut up. The point isn't where anyone's from or what they do with their money. It's about hardworking guys trying to make a living. We have to make sure that you do so according to the law. Which means you can't be within 20 feet of this man's place of business. They say I'm off the sidewalk is okay. Who's they? 42 Broadway. Uh, here we go with 42 Broadway. Where's that? 42 Broadway in downtown Yemen, you firebombing son of a bitch. I blind you son of a Nick. bitch too. Put the fuck down. Both of you take a deep breath. I want both of you to take a moment. Think about the consequences of your actions and don't do anything makes matters worse. On three, both of you, breathe. Huh? Huh? I take the first breath. All I want is make living. I don't take no breaths because you put glue in my locks. I don't put glue. I think funny hair black guy put glue. The guy that camps out in my toilet? I threw him out last week. He said he'd do something. Why didn't you report this to me? Every time I come in restaurant, you say you blind me with lie. See? Aren't we talking? I'll go back 20 feet. 20 feet, no problem. Why don't you go back over the ocean, Nick? Sir, what's your name? Omar. Trash me. Before Omar? Sure. Nick. I'm reading Omar making some real gestures of living, let live. He also said it wasn't him gummed your locks up. That son of a bitch camps out of my toilet. So, let us maybe have a look into that. Meanwhile, God bless. Think there's business enough to go around? Can me and Officer Valentine hope you keep taking those deep breaths, keep up your efforts getting along? Don't block my doorway. Don't glue my locks. Don't call me a firebomb. There you go. You both have a good one. What are you standing around for? Get back to work. Are we allowed to take Roser? I may be heading across the river, Nona. Work do you in? Why couldn't you have acted like that when you brought Paul and me in to begin with? Sir, we aren't going to see eye to eye, so probably we should just leave things lay. Mr. Riley's treating the release, Sarge. How are you feeling, Mr. Riley? Like I've gone from being a punching bag to being handled with kid gloves? I'm going to ask my officers to write up the events of this morning. If you're inclined, I'd invite you to do the same. I told you. They assaulted me and my friend, who's now going into a coma at Kings County. You don't want to start with being publicly intoxicated in a fist fight on the street. You got no beef what happened to you in that alley? No. When I woke up this morning, I was hoping someone would have me up against that very alley wall. The two of you want to spend your time writing up your reports. Yeah, all right, boss. Yeah, great. Mr. Isla, I doubt very strongly that you are facing charges. Also, if you feel that you and the person that you were with are the victims of a crime, we want all the information that you can provide. So you can bury it? Malarkey. Someone's head gets run into a metal garbage bin that's an assault. The person that did it gets charged. If you'd care to write your account, I have a room available right here. Yes. Yes, I would. Would you like something to drink? How about a Greyhound? They suspended our liquor license. If I could get a Coke, I would appreciate it. A Coke I can provide.
How's your head, Phil? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I saw they were stitching you up. Me and Pitorino were uh, busy with the Andrew sisters. That one guy got some head problems of his own. So Bill hematoma he's got. They have a drill in his skull to release the pressure. Gonna be all right? Yeah, I think it will be. So that's good, anyway. Yeah, you couldn't believe the mouth on that one guy, Phil. Every second word, some smart-ass crack or uh, him baitless. And him and the other got to fighting in the back? We had to pull over. Comma two of them down. Uh-huh. Being truthful, Phil, your report, the attitude this guy had at the scene, it's going to explain a lot. Yeah, I put in about a smart mouth before the aerial attack. How both guys were resisting. Then I had to subdue the limpy guy. What'd you say about the other guy? Not much. I didn't... I didn't put in much about him. How about Villain Waver? I didn't read his report. I don't recall him saying nothing. This guy was too physical. Hey, Phil, neither you nor Villain Waver say the guy was physical. Hangs out me and Pitorino. Max, me nor Villain Waver know nothing what you did or didn't do. Anyone comes to us gets zero negative information. That's where you ought to leave it. Meaning the two of you keep your necks in like turtles. Take it as you want to take it. Did you not say to me your last words as I'm putting this asshole in the unit? Give this guy a smack. I was hitting the head with the bottle. Blowing off steam, I say, this guy's lying. He's a blue angel. Give him a smack in the smush. Give him a smack. You felt that was necessary and appropriate. My partner heard you say that. Yeah. All right, Mac. There was basis for that. On how that guy was resisting. And the other fruit, too. I'm putting that in my report, and so is Pedarino. I just hate thinking that you or Villanueva is going to put the knives in our backs. Stay in my life. Yeah? How do you figure yours stacks up against the guy with a busted noggin? Believe me, I feel awful about that guy. B believe me, I, I feel like I'm in the middle of this. I, I feel like hell and I'm afraid as hell. By your arrest report, I can't see why any of that would be the case. Yeah, well. You want to amend your report? I want this day never to have happened. That's talking like a child. You're making it clear. You got reservations. What happened, how you wrote it up. Your career's in a balance here, Tom. Maybe your freedom. What do you want to do? I don't know. Then I'm done in here. Flanagan's a bad guy. Got picked up in the 70s on a weapons charge. He's in a group now we like for guns and explosives to Ireland. Has he indicated that he wants you to keep driving for him? Yes, sir. That being the case, it would be of value to the department. You got close to him. What would I do? Well, as far as your academy class goes, they'll be told you dropped out, which they'll figure means something criminal popped up in your past. How long are we talking about? It's hard to tell. On the bright side, undercover is traditionally a shortcut to the detective bureau. Plus, obviously, we overlooked the infraction you moonlighting while at the academy. We'd like a decision today. Yeah, okay. I just gotta find my brother. On one hand, doing what you did, you're exposed to discipline, and, and this is a way out. On the other hand, the only cop you'll come into contact with is this asshole inspector. You'll be ass deep with a bunch of low-life donkeys. And could come out of it with a gold shield, which I know you turned down half a dozen times just to stay on the street. Nothing wrong with wanting to be a detective. What's wrong is not finishing the academy. Losing touch with other cops. It's a family, Terry. 
You don't want to lose touch with your family. I know that you have my best interests at heart. Once you're in, you're in. You realize that. You change your mind, you're not going to have no future on the job. I don't think that's going to happen. You want to sleep on it at least? They said they need to know right away. You say you want to sleep on it, they ain't going to say no, Terry. I don't want to sleep on it, Jimmy. All right, then God bless. Officer Pitarino. Lieutenant. Or Captain. I've explained that you're not here in your IAB capacity. Yeah, congratulations on your promotion. I'm going to be taking over this command, and I wanted to talk to you off the record about the incident in which this uh, Paul Engelman was injured. No disrespect, sir, but is, is a conversation like this ever off the record? I want to explain to you how the same actions can have different consequences depending on how they become known. If I'm going to tell you anything, bottom line, I got to know I'm not losing my job. No one is offering you a deal here, Officer Pitarino. I've got a family. God, most people have families. I, I put my life up ten years on this job. These collars, okay? They, they were baiting us pretty hard, just so you don't think it came from nowhere. What were they baiting you about? All the guy was running his mouth nonstop at us, his boyfriend, and, and, and pretty soon the two of them started kicking at each other. I mean, they, they were going at it pretty pretty good, Captain, and that, that's why we had to pull over and, and, and break them up. I, I'm just saying here, it, it, no disrespect, if you're telling me there's nothing on the table, then, then I'm an idiot here saying more. Me doing the right thing ain't going to feed my family if I wind up upstate. Is that how bad a thing you did? No equivalency on the table. I say nothing more. Then the conversation is over, Officer Pedrino. Is that his nephew Nick's going at? Big Brett, Nick. Big Brett. From within it comes. Judas with his glue. What's your nephew doing up the fire escape? To escape with his secret glue. Nick. Big Brett. Shut up, Momar Gaddafi. Nick, you gotta put down the bat. Did you glue your uncle's lock, son? He yells at me all at a time. Takes out of my pay, I break something. Should I pay you for breaking something? You can't talk about this if you got a bat in your hand. Nick, he's a good kid. Forget about it. He's a good kid. A big future for me. Getting yelled at and called an idiot. Because the shoe fits your idiot foot. That's it, Nick. Don't start with the breast. Forget the breast. And I'm telling you to put down the bat, or I'm going to bring you down hard and I'm going to lock you up. Watch your nephew run in the restaurant, Nick. I want my life stops being aggravation morning to night. It's all right. It's all right. Good. Now I get locked up. No one's getting locked up. We're all gonna sit down here a little while. We're all gonna calm down. Did I notice the application there of a small amount of physical force? I want to be a prisoner of one approach. Come on, Nick. We all take breaths, huh? I'm sorry, I don't know what a good likelihood means. Is that better than a 50-50 likelihood? I'm sorry if I've been belligerent. I hope you understand I'm very worried about my friend. Thank you. They've relieved the pressure, and there's a good likelihood his faculties won't be permanently impaired. Good news. What's going to happen about that? We'll see how much of this we can corroborate. 
including once your friend can talk to us. I don't deny Paul was confrontational. He's an unhappy person, and he was unhappy with me. You indicate that your relationship is in a rocky patch. But it never got past words. I mean, it got past words between Paul and me, but with that officer, he didn't do anything more than yell. It's not a situation should provoke violence. I think if he could have, that officer would have killed him. Not to put words in your mouth. I don't get the sense that you feel Officer Pitarino was physically abusive. He held me back. He held me against the wall while the other one beat on Paul. Officer Pitarino, the officer restraining you, he saw what Officer Hegan was doing? I don't know if he really did. I mean, now that you ask me, it seems to me he didn't want to look. How's it going, Hector? So tell you about the fight we broke up? My famous cranial intervention. How about this jackpot we're in, huh, Jimmy? These guys are breaking up a fruit fight. When Rushkov gets hurt, me and Pitarino are gonna do the transport. Now we're looking at charges. What are they saying, man? The two bone smokers are fighting a hump and a God knows what in the backseat. I stopped the radio car to break it up. The one gets a headache. And uh, that's me and Pitarino's fault. Anyways, I think Donovan wants us on the street. You walking away, uh, Phil? I just realized today, that's your specialty. Hey, Matt. That's all you get, Egan. Any more, we go. Kiss my ass, qualify. Yeah, that'll cut, cut it. it out. Take it easy, Phil. What I just heard, Matt, you got plenty on your plate. These two humps not doing no What do you want to see, you? He can write up a fight with you. Who's that bottle, huh, Phil? Some jilted fag. Did you miss a date? What's going on here? Nothing, boss. It's over. It's not looking too over. It's over. Hey, if it's over, break it up. Yeah. Good. From the past. Congratulations, all the progress on the job. Where they got you, Anthony? Up Harlem. Uh huh. Yeah, actually, I'm living over here in Park Slope, though. Over off of Waverly. Said so. Yeah, I had a place uh, three years. Nice place. Top floor, roof garden. Good for you. How's your family doing? They're good. All healthy, knock wood. I made it up to now? <laughs> we got four, me huh? and Vicky. A boy, three girls. Yeah. I remember you already got started when we were in the academy. Any developments at front from you? No, not not yet, no. Matrimonially entangled? No, not as yet. Hey, Dick, you think maybe we could talk in there a little? Absolutely. So what tour they got you doing? Well, last few months I'm mostly doing nights. Got a few health problems with my mom. Like being available to her daytimes. Hope she gets to feeling better. So, uh, this morning, Dickie, I'm up on my roof, right, and uh, one of your radio cars pulls into the alley. My guys get out, pull a couple collars from the back seat. One of our guys, one of the collars, shouting and carrying on, and he restrains that when he just pretty much holds him against the wall. But the other cop, Dickie, Maybe 20 seconds, back and forth with the other collar, and then he takes it and runs him into a dumpster. I mean, head first, right into the metal corner of a dumpster. This is the uh, number of the radio car. We're already looking into this, Anthony. Yeah. It's a big help coming forward. Kyle had a big mouth, Dickie, but he didn't earn nothing like that beating. Good for you, coming in. I just soon it wasn't publicized. Sure. You know, Vicky lives to matchmake. Should I turn her loose? <laughs> I'm all right, Vicky. Appreciate this a lot, though. All right. Good to see you. Sorry for the circumstances. 
Thanks for doing what you did. Yeah. Something about this seems familiar. Last legs, Officer Pitterino. My position hasn't changed, sir. Sure it has. Since you and I spoke, independent of each other, two witnesses have stated that while you restrained Douglas Eiler, your partner administered a vicious and unprovoked beating that left his friend half dead. This job will not countenance what happened in that alley. And the best way to get that message out is to lock you up with Hegan. But we have reason to believe that you were complicit rather than active. Saying that now could keep you out of jail. Say it. Pitorino comes downstairs, that's a train wreck. How's it going, Sarge? Matt? You handed in your report. Shift's over. Should call it a day. Oh, I don't want to do that, do I, Sarge? You don't get a chance watching your partner at three and a half years walk downstairs after he puts the shiv in your back. Matt. No good's gonna come of you confronting Pedarino. No good came of nothing today, Sarge. I show up at work half a chance. I'm going to jail. Ain't that right? Ain't that right, Sarge? My partner's giving me the shiv. Lose the call from Villanueva away, but don't stand up. I got a good look at jail. Because some fag decides he's gonna kick his wife's ass for making goo-goo eyes at some other guy's joint. And I gotta listen to him. When all we're trying to do is get him to the house. I gotta listen to him call me ten different kinds of big men and beg me to stop. Says he wants to give me an IQ test. And he wants to check my pay stuff. Wants to know do I make a month what he makes a week. I gotta listen to this faggot crap. In between the in between the blubbering and the and the, and the joint grabbing and oh I hate you. Oh I love you. Oh I'll never forgive you. Oh I'll never forgive myself until you wanna pull over. Just so you can throw up. All right, man. How do you feel, Tom? Huh? All right. Hey, there's a currency exchange down the street. You can turn the silver in for paper money. I'm sorry, man. I got a family. Yeah, I got a family. Don't make it worse. 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 Don't make After a year and a half, it got expunged. Do you why you mad at Tucker? You remember the girl I was seeing out there? Rosemary Parisi. I had a couple of drinks. I was going 12 miles over the speed limit. It wasn't the DUI. It was Terry leaving it out on his personal history questionnaire, giving the problem. But, I mean, did he know he had to put it in? I should have put it in. Jimmy, there's nothing you can do. But in the meantime... I'll just look for another job. This isn't the end of the world, right? And who knows, maybe at some point they'll let you reapply. Excuse me. It's too hard on her, Terry. They said, don't tell anybody. It's too hard on her. Wait a second. Yo, no. 
Hey. Hey, Phil. I'm gonna get a beer. Anybody want anything? No, thanks. Yeah. I blunder into some weather disturbance. Terry's leaving the academy. Why? DWI four and a half years ago, he didn't report on his personal history questionnaire. That's terrible, Jimmy. Poor kid. Yeah. Leo, give me a beer. How's it going, Jimmy? Hey, Eddie. This invisibility potion really works. How I hear it, Rusikov, you put a few nails in Matt Hegan's coffin. I ain't gonna act like nothing happened. Phil did nothing to Matt Hegan. He didn't do nothing for him. Only thing I could have done for Hegan was say I was someplace I wasn't and saw something I didn't see. I guess being new to the precinct, you wouldn't feel no obligation to do that, huh? Don't be looking for that after I've been here a while, neither. I ain't running interference for some asshole decides to tune a guy up over who he likes to kiss. You got your beer ready? Yeah. I got my beer. Hi, Phil. Hey. Can you excuse us a minute? Absolutely. Come here, sis. Pinch me harder. I'm gonna start crying. All right. We got something to tell you. I'm sorry, sis. I never lied to you over nothing before. The job said Terry had to give you that story about the DWI. What is going on? He's going undercover. So there's less for everyone to keep straight. They wanted him giving you the cover story, too. So you're not thrown out? It's supposed to look like I'm thrown out. <sighs> we apologize. I expect it probably must be somewhat dangerous. Don't have to be. Join us, Phil? Delighted. Rusikov and the Three Doyles. Think that work as a singing group? <laughs> that works. Sergeant! What it's worth, I admired your work in that room. Thanks. Think the job will make enough of a difference how to handle Hegan and Pitterino? Enough of a difference between doing the beating and not stopping the beating, you mean? <clears throat> yeah. Pitarino holding the one man against the wall while Hegan beats his friend. It isn't the picture that arouses a lot of concern in me for Pitarino's future. I understand your point of view. That won't be an easy thing for me to say once I start working at a station house. It'll be like it is with you. One of your cops gets caught wrong because you work with him every day. You remember all the right he's done. I'll be glad to have that chance to see all the right things we do. I'll see you in the morning, sir. I'm not gonna work now, having you for a CEO. It won't work, or you're not gonna try and make it work. Not like we don't know each other. I'm asking you to give yourself a chance to see me in a different context. No one is looking to join us at the hip. If it doesn't work, you can put in for a transfer. Not that you'll need it, but I'll help facilitate that. I am asking you to give it a try. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> 